<clears throat> Howdy guys, I actually ain't recorded in a month or a day. So I thought I'd better come on there and show y'all a little bit about what we're doing right now. We're in the shop, working at Crane. Been working at Crane, weathered out in the shop. We got like four days of logging, three hard days, four easy going days of logging. Either or. But we, weather's hit, thaw out's hit, and we're in the shop doing a bunch of work catch up time and fixing up some of this junk we got all screwed up. So I thought I'd take you around the latest job I've got myself into. This started out as Derek's job, but he got sick. Now I went and got this Corona booster mess because my wife's been on me and on me and get the mess done. So whatever, I finally submitted. I told him I'm gonna get a Jewish star David Richard say I submitted and then on the back I was gonna be put camp trustee, you know, that sort of thing. But <laughs> anyways, they're convinced Derek and Morgan, they're convinced that I gave them Corona. What'd you say, Morgan? It was Corona booster. I gave, I gave them booster Corona off my shot. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's true. I don't know. <laughs> so they got sick. So I, this had to go because we need this skitter running. So I took it over. Derek had it pulled partially down and I tore it the rest of the way down and started cleaning up the parts and doing the dishes. But it's a rear end off a of 648H. It's 14,000 axle. And those of you that's taking this real serious, this is the one that's the YZ19493. Uh, that's the axle it is. So, what happened at morning? We're YouTubing. Yeah. Most of you watching probably knows more about rear ends than I do. I'm not gonna sit there and act like I'm some kind of rear end specialist. I've seen it too, one or two. Oh no, I'm just kidding. So, you know, I'll give y'all a quick rundown. So those of you don't know can be caught up to speed. Um, <clears throat> ways John Deere rear ends work, you got an inboard ring and pinion, and then on the outside, headed to the wheels, you got your outboard planetaries. Now, the shaft comes in here, through the pinion, whatever you call it. I don't know what you're supposed to call it. But there's your pinion gear. And it comes in, we call it the hog head. But it goes into the hog head here. And the pinion runs in the ring gear, which is right there. And inside this cage, you got a cross, which is right here. We've been doing dishes. There's a cross. There's the shafts for your spider gears. Here's little spider gears. And here's a little, well, I'm gonna get pizza food on this. But the spider gears are sitting there spinning around on this. And that way, and they don't move really until I can make a turn or something, they can rest. The inside tires don't take a shorter turn. But when you, uh, but when you want defy lock, when you want to lock her in tight, this hip piece bolts to that piece all in the pumpkin or the hog head, it's all on top here. And this here is a, uh, well, I don't know what you're supposed to call it, I guess a manifold. And there's an O-ring here. And there's a port, here's your work ports. And they equal out back and forth. And so one port will be your brake system and the other port will be your uh, diffy lock system, which is this port over here. But, now this little hole, it pushes in there and it pushes that piston over, which smashes all this stuff together on the inside and then it'll lock up. There's a bunch of friction discs in here. And this bolts the back side of here. And there's a bunch of friction discs, which is here. And then you got backup disc here. And it smashes them all together like a sandwich, like a big tough sandwich. And then it locks everything together. And when it locks everything together, them spider gears can't spin. And all that mess. And then you lock up tight, got four by four. Now, here's the outside housing of that. This is what goes on the end of that, it's a cap. And there's the actual, uh, I don't know what you call it. Anyway, there's that. But this here's a piston. The reason I'm going deep into this, cause 
I'm doing some growling at Johnny Popper. I love my Johnny Popper, you know, all know that, but Johnny Popper is stupid. This is just flat stupid. This is new style teammate four axle. I'm used to teammate twos and I can't think of threes maybe, but this is a four. They put this freaking big lots Walmart looking piece of crap bearing in here. That's got the chinchest looking shit box cage around it I ever seen. Now wait, break away and go to the internet and show them a picture of it. Look at this piece of shit. John Deere, come on, man. What the hell? One flake in the rear end to get up in that track, cause rear ends have flakes in them, I guess. Somebody at the engineering desk don't realize that, but rear end's gonna have flakes rolling around in them. Then you put this beer can chintzy made piece of shit in there. You're just asking for disaster eventually. So anyways, that finally come apart. Cause this is the ring, that's the piston. This is the ring that connects to this. Through this, here it's been rubber. And push it over and it's supposed to be able to go like this here. It's supposed to be able to spin freely. So when it's pushing against, it's pushing against that bearing. It can make this ham sandwich here all squished together and working and lock them together. But it's all headed off by this beer can piece of shit Walmart freaking bearing. There's Johnny Popper put in here. Now, if y'all's wondering, <clears throat> going to intellectual thinking here, if y'all's wondering what, um, what's the purpose of outboard planetary gears? What's the purpose of having, so anyways, hang on, let me jump around, I'm jumping around, I've been eating breakfast wide open. So all the diffy lock stuff, everything's done inside the hog head. When you come out through, you see these little splines right here in your spotter gear section? And it goes out to this wee whopper, or sun gear, if you're being technical. But we call it the wee whopper because we know better. But that wee whopper drive, this is the wee whopper drive. This is a wee whopper drive. Wee whopper We're running, drive. Yeah, it's a wee whopper drive. So the wee whopper drive comes out to center, like here. And then comes out and it runs this outboard planetary. And then that's running your deep. So the reason you have your outdoor plant, outdoor. Well, it is outdoor machine. But the reason you have an outdoor planetary is because once you do this, once you go to your final reduction through your planetary system, once you go to your final reduction, then your torque goes to the roof. So if your torque's gonna go through the roof, you're gonna need big parts. And the way John Deere's mentality is, which I think is a good mentality on that part, is the weight of your skidders out there is a set of bearings around this little uh, hemorrhoid right there. It's got bearings around it and there's bearings inside this, which you do here. And a big old shaft. But the skidder driving, rolling with wide tires is gonna have a lot of flex in that shaft. You know, Bobby Goodson style flex, you know, with the stuff that they do and stuff like that and Tiger Cats and all that stuff. So you're gonna have to have heavy loads, all that stress is gonna go like here every time you run on, on a thing. It's, it's gonna put, so you gotta have a big old shaft anyways to carry the load. So John Deere says, well, hell, if I gotta do that anyways, we're gonna have to have a big shaft to get you some leverage to hold your skidder up from his tires and bearings and failures and all that mess. We're gonna put the planetary inboard and make a big set of bearings here, a big set of bearings there, and a great big shaft to support the weight. So all is good. We'll do our deep reduction on the inside where you got one single bath, oil bath in there to feed it all. And uh, I like it, I like it's a good design. Cause if you didn't, if you did your reduction ahead of time, then your rear end weigh four times what it does. You know what I mean? Cause it, all the parts in it would have to hold up to that torque. And the way it's done is the torque happens right where it needs to happen at the very end. But, but, but before that, they're getting it off fast spinning. I guess what you you look it up engineering term fast spinning is what they're getting but <clears throat> that's it and in my simple-minded mentality so not to oversimplify things and try to make a uh, dogma out of this uh, oversimplified dogma out of this or something but John Deere dear John Deere when you got parts in here like this here running great big old parts like here. 
and doing your thing like here you know and it's it's all good it said they've made a rear end or two johnny popper you've made a rear end or two you know you have you do good at it we love you for it but why <laughs> in the grace of god <laughs> would you do that and put a damn big lots freaking bearing in the middle of it come on man i'm like old joe biden come on man what are you thinking man that, so which i hate to be judgmental because i can't make no rear end but i'm telling you it's stupid so and there's your out there's your planetary your your outside ring so you're you know those of you is actually trying to learn something from this it's your sun gear that's your planets and then they run around that that's connected to the housing so then when you spin your you spin your sun gear here at a reduced rate see so that's connected to the skidder so at a reduced rate this is going to spin inside there and do your deep reduction and then do your heavy duty torque torque on there and then this here is your valve on the outside on each side and there's an inboard wet disc brake so here's your brake piston. Here's your brake piston. Yeah. It's got seals around this face and this face, and it pushes against that friction disc, and then there's your pad out there. And that thing, so your brakes are locked in with these cogs right y'all. And then there, that, that right there goes up against, you see them little teeth marks? Them's are sandwiched up against the outside of your planetary. Your outside, out, 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 and your planetary ring on the outside. But it chewed stuff up. We had to polish up these gears. These spider gears had chunks out of them. Those of you sharp on these rear ends and stuff, what do you think of my, my polishing job? Then there's your bearings that holds in there. The guts and the pumpkin. So, so any comments, any advice? From anybody, MLH, you watch this, give me some advice. Tell me what to do, I'll do it. Tell me what to do, I'll be there, buddy. But, uh, let me know what y'all think. There's a cage, there's a, took apart cage of planet. There's a zillion billion, a zillion billion. Call Donald Trump, he'll tell you. There's a zillion million pins in there. Oh, that's, that's currency and bearings right there. That's a form of currency. Pretty soon they keep it. Canadian truckers up there doing that stuff. This is gonna be our currency. <laughs> Boy, I got that's got them squalling up there, I think. So that's that. And then there's the inboard. Here's the crawl section for the spider gear. Oh, I just built my pins there where my rings. And there's your little gears for that. So all of them turned out okay. And we end up we're gonna have 28. Uh, I don't know what uh I don't know what Andy's gonna charge me down at Shapers, but Johnny Popper charged me like uh, two grand worth of parts. I just bought a bunch of chintzy little, you know, wear rings, brake seals, and there's your seals for your diffy lock system. There's your diffy lock seals, your brake seals, and all your uh, wear ring doodads, and uh, let's see what else we got. Cha. Where's my mess? Where's my trash? I'm mess my trash. Well, or here somewhere, there's another wear ring. And it got to eating the spider gear wear rings in here somewhere. No, oh, right here. There's the, uh, see, it's got chunks. You can see where them flakes of metal been. But I mean, when you design a rear end, it can't eat flakes, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, Tater, go show them that piece again. What the hell is the deal with this piece? Come on, Johnny Popper. Come on. Man, you all know better than that. Come on, man. The other rear ends, they done a pass. They don't have that. It's like, it's like we know that life happens. It's like when it mentions car commercials. Life happens, man. Come on, man. Why do that, man? Come on, man. Well, we'll go back to our book. We've all been listening to the book on, on Adolf Hitler. Uh, learn about him. Boy, he's a psychopath, I tell you. Ooh. He was a guy that got, he was a little wimpy little guy, uh, physically, you know, not mentally, but, but he's weaker mentally when everybody realized. He's a con man. 
He's a bona fide con man, that's what Hitler was. Bona fide con man. Now he did have goals and he wasn't a dummy. But he'd lie. He'd look right at you and call a banana red. And he'd try to get you to believe that banana was red. And and he'd do that and to get to get all right. <clears throat> so when they say say for some reason for political gain you needed everybody to realize a banana's red. You know. Uh, mind you some are political leaders now. But so they get you to believe there's a banana's red. Well then everybody next thing you know, you get everybody to believe there's red bananas. Well then when the tide changes, they're like, all right, well let's go back to yellow bananas now. Then you turn around and, and crucify all the 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 conscientious people that did what they was told and followed the red bananas like you're supposed to follow the red bananas. Next thing you know, they're like, well, no, the bananas are red. They've been red for the past five years. We got red bananas, they ain't yellow. Well, throw them son of bucks in a can. You know, when it ain't no good to you anymore, throw them in a can, get rid of them. Because, so anyhow, his whole cabinet, his whole, uh, all his cronies that he surrounded himself by with an echo chamber, then you, it turns into tyranny, man. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful to study Adolf Hitler. I, I highly recommend y'all study Adolf Hitler because it shows you what can happen when, when you surround yourself, when you're actually uh, highly excitable, highly committed, uh, ferociously committed person to a cause and you surround yourself with an echo chamber. What's a stubborn upright one? He reluctantly accepted Shushning's resignation, but he refused to make life in part his successor. We're covering the part now where Hitler's finally coming out of his shell. He's getting ready to run on Austria, and Austria's like, who is this guy? Because he's lied to him all the way at this point, making him think he's somebody that's decent. All right, so here's the socket. It's the only socket we got. I'm ordering more sockets, but it's cheap, cheap sockets. But it was cracked. There you go. Now we're going to put the hammer to it and see if she gets, see if we can loosey goosey this thing. The reason I'm doing this is because there's metal shavings got on this, or I wouldn't even be taking this loose. It's, there's no lash in it, but I was running it and I can feel stuff in them bearings and I want to get in there and inspect them bearings. I don't want to just assume it's going to be fine. hammer I really like it look at the design of this that's the only thing that would put up with that with the head of this brass hammer I keep one around I always keep a brass hammer around and I try not to abuse it just use it when you need it let's pull this off see what it looks like 
said, Vienna should never have been admitted into the union of the greater Germany. Hitler never loved Vienna. He hated us. Poppins own vested spirits on Mark were spoiled that same day when he built out von Kettler. In his address to the Reichstag on March 18th, he asserted that Churchill needed Look at this, there's chunks of metal in there. We was good, good idea to take us apart. Look in here. Look at the damage. I need to go ahead and get bearing. Well, I hate to rebearing that thing. Look, there's chunks of. There's chunks of stuff all in it. Look at this. Look at this. Oh wow. It is in there. Look at that. Chunks and bearings. There you go, John Deere. There's your cage and your bearings in there from that chintzy piece of crap. Come on, boys. I hope there's a teammate five axle out there that don't have that stupid thing. Oh, man. Oh. Well, let me get the work out. Give me another 40 years. So that I can now exploit the accomplished union for the benefit of all. Received a notation so overwhelming that it wow. knocked this race out with a punch in, in that little cubby hole. All the way down. This punch, this race, I'm going to weld the inside. It's an old trick. I got caught as a younger man. On March 14th, and I'll uh, Chamberlain had addressed show you all that uh, in, in, in case somebody hadn't seen this before. The in the same speech, Chamberlain announced the decision of his government, which was to be even more pleasing to He bluntly rejected the suggestion not only the person you could get. The Russian German general, the Shapo's real role, nor the personal guilt of Himmler and Heinrich in cooking up the false charges. On the second day, March 18th, the trial was concluded with the inevitable verdict. Proven not guilty as charged and acquitted. It was a personal exoneration for General von Fritsch, but it did not restore him to his command, nor the army to its former position of some independence in the Third Reich. Since the trial was held in camera, the public knew nothing of it or the issues involved. On March 25th, Hitler sent a telegram to Fritsch congratulating him on his recovery of health. That was all. The deposed general, who had declined to point an accusing finger at Himmler in court, now made a final futile gesture. He challenged the Gestapo to, to a duel. It the draws it up. Drawn up. Soon after the war, I came to the conclusion that we should have to be victorious in three battles if Germany it's were to mess. become powerful again. One. The battle against the working class, oppression by the Austrians, left a great deal to be desired in solving the minorities' problem. They were often chauvinistic and frequently attacked. The fall from my own rule of the deep resentment of the Nazis against the imprisonment of the Nazis, that by the second defense, which was sentenced to 15 years confinement to the truth, which was doubtful that the guilty of more than working for the Soviets.
Pretty big damn job, man. What is that? Is that what you buy that used ring out there? Is that what that? Junk skin. Yeah, that's what the last thing works on. Yeah, yeah there's a tell me about that. It ain't paid for itself yet, but it's going close to it. Hell yeah. He made it clear that they were fair with him. The first price. The do not differ essentially All right. from those of the version. We worked on the pinion gear and Hades cleaned it up as much as but there are two I possibly know how to do. Instead of the opening sentence of May 21st, which read, It is not my intention this baby to right smash here. Czechoslovakia into I love the this baby. The new directive began. This is just a stir, stir the pot. This is Mikey Match Project over here. And look how clean it is over here. But look what happened over here. It's because the other night, Mikey left the hose off on the loader. <laughs> I come in and boys, come on. Chase me across the parking lot. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, I'm can camera. camera. <laughs> so, <clears throat> So me and Big Daddy, we was checking the brakes. Derek just put brake seals in this thing. And Derek said, I feel, of course he was sick, nobody asked him, and I didn't want to bug him, I hate to bug him while he's sick, but. <laughs> That's what I told him about it. <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, what? Okay, so Dad was running the other day. This is Big Daddy's loader, old number one is. It's the oldest one. So it's Dad's baby. So Derek babied him and he got his rear end er, brake seals all in. Well, Dad went to rent the first day and it started puking oil. After it warmed up, it started puking oil out the vent on the back rear end. Well, Carrie was running around Dad and he goes, hey, you're, you're leaking. So Dad, being the way Dad is, he's meticulous. You know, he's like, well, let's check it out. So I come in and Matt and uh, Mikey started working on the hose. And I thought, well, heck, I'll check this. I'll do a bypass check. Well, what, I, what I did on a bypass check, I don't know if it's kosher or not, but where's my little fitting? Just still my, the little, uh... all right, chair. Sure. So I made this here for my hydraulic testing kit. No, I made that for a, I put that on a hose. So this goes to the back rear end. And the other side goes to the front rear end. That's a brake hose. So I pressured it up with air and then went to the rear ends and listen at each front and back and listen for, uh, uh, air bypass and bubbles and all that stuff. Derek's got it tighter in Fort Knox, so it ain't it ain't leaking. I told Dad just run it because it was over. I asked Derek when he came in yesterday. I said, "Was it full?" And he said, "Oh, it's full, full." So well, it just expanded and he's making room in there.